Yes. Ms. Schneider. Yes. yes. Mr. DeVito. Yes. Mr. Perkdepile. What are yes. we doing? Mr. McClung. Yes. 5-1. This yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Moves us to number five, the discussion of commercial recycled glass and cardboard. Move to discuss. Second. Second. Floor is open. Mr. DeVito. Um, I've gone online and looked at a lot of cities across the country, and they vary from mandatory commercial recycling to even mandatory residential <coughs> recycling. What I would be advocating is uh, mandatory commercial recycling of glass and cardboard for restaurants and bars. And I will make a motion to have the city attorney draw up an ordinance uh, dealing with the mandatory re commercial recycling of glass and cardboard for all restaurants and bars within the city limits. Second. I'll second that. <coughs> Mr. Burke, I'll have your hand up first. Yes, uh, I have a problem with uh, mandatory. Um, currently, right now, residential is not mandatory, but typically everybody I know recycles. Um, so when you say mandatory, are you associating a fine with it if somebody is taking out the trash at 2.30 in the morning at some bar, you know, just dumps it in a yellow bag and, you know, I, I have a little bit of a hard time with that. I think it I think our first outreach ought to be some sort of flyer in with the with the waste disposal ticket that you get every month, and um, say, hey, listen, we'd like to we'd like to see you guys all recycle. Let you know that pick up your bottles, and especially to all the commercial businesses. I I think that'd be a good first effort on you know the city's part before we go to to a mandatory fine stage. Mr. Nader, go ahead. Mr. Well, he started by saying what I wanted to say. I have a problem with mandatory. Um, how, how would this be policed? You've got trash and garbage tied up in usually a black plastic bag. How are they going to know? I thoroughly agree. Highly asking people to pointing out the money they would save it would behoove them to recycle and I'm kind of surprised in this town if people aren't Did it? Yeah Just to read it. Uh, We were the first city in the state of Arkansas to institute a recycling program we've become a model for the rest of the state for recycling mm -hmm. I think in today's world it would be hard to believe that a business would not know it's prudent to recycle. The reason I say it's to make it mandatory is because those of us that do recycle pay a penalty for those that don't recycle. So it costs me money every time a business doesn't recycle because partic particularly with glass, that goes into a landfill it has a shelf life of hundreds of thousands of years. If you're aware of the problem that's going on in North Arkansas, it's, it's a pretty serious problem. Uh, we're particularly lucky, but the, the communities to our east are having some very serious problems with landfills being over full, uh, finding adequate space. Uh, this is not an if, this is a when it will happen for us. So if you wonder how do you enforce that, when I put my cardboard out on the curb every night, it's supposed to be corrugated cardboard. When the guy picks it up, I will find that one non-corrugated piece of cardboard sitting on my curb. They, they, they know that. And, and the garbage man knows what goes into the garbage truck. And the recycling people know what goes into the recycling 
bin. No, I'm not saying the garbage police are going to come along and, and, you know, what they do in other cities when they find recyclables in the wrong container, they leave them on the curb and you've got to deal with them. You've got to schlep them back down the stairs or schlep them back into your building. And I would start off with a innocuous fine of $25. But if, if they don't do it, it costs us all money. And I'm only advocating for the bars and the restaurants that produce, by volume, the overwhelming amount of recyclable garbage. And everyone that is not recycled goes into the landfill. Right now, Harrison and Mountain Home, they're dealing with almost a $6 million issue that they're going to have to figure out how to pay that $6 million because their landfill failed. So all of our garbage is going into a landfill. How long do we know it's going to last? When is that window of opportunity going to close? And the next landfill is going to be that much more expensive and that much harder to find. Cardboard is one of the items that does have a value for recycling, and glass is an item that stays in the landfill virtually forever. Uh, Mr. Perkbaum, I believe you're next. I still don't think we ought to find them. I think we ought to reach out to them. And I, got, I really have to ask the question, if it's so obvious that the bars in particular are generating this amount of glass waste, why do they not recycle? I mean, that's, you know, when everybody, if we've led the way, have they not been informed or educated? And that's, that's kind of my question. If there's some egregious bar owners who are just like, well, ah, just throw these in the landfill, <laughs> you know, then I, I think we need to educate them. But, and, and finally, I have this to say about the whole thing about recycling glass. A very good friend of mine who uh, has has done some national studies on this. He's an environmental scientist in in Austin, and I work very closely with him. And he developed. Uh, he was working on developing a use for recycled glass. And as part of his analysis, he found out that a majority, a majority of the glass, goes to landfills anyway because it cannot be reused once it's mixed, especially with colors. The, the people that manufacture bottles want a spe specific color or clear, no color. And so when it becomes mixed up, majority of that is not used. Now, I don't mean to pop anybody's bubble. That's just what he found out. And when I say majority, it's like 70 to 80%. Now, I can find, I'll, I'll contact my friend and, and get the studies that he's referring to. But that aside, I think it's still a good idea. I mean, there's still some, some people that use it. I don't know who they are, but they're, they're out there somewhere. Snyder, you had your hand up next? No, he was next. Okay, Mr. Mitchell, you had your hand up there. <laughs> secret. On the issue of mandatory, I, I agree with everything Mr. Alderman DeVito has said, and the reason I'm not upset <coughs> about mandatory is for the same reason that we see a lot of lawns that aren't mowed, houses that are neglected, and a lot of other problems in the city that has to do with code enforcement. There's no teeth in the codes. There's no subsequent penalties. There's no subsequent action that takes place that, that, that al allows code enforcement or anybody to, to ass assess a penalty or a, a negative outcome to the, the lack of action. And we've heard that many times from our attorney in the past, that we need something in, in the codes to do that. And as far as the people that come by and collect stuff, I get left little notes if I put the wrong stuff in my recycle bin. <laughs> little love notes <laughs> attached to it. And so I think we have a system in place with the people that come by and pick up the recyclables and that pick up the trash. They have, they have no problem letting, letting me know anyway when I've messed up. It's not. Um, okay, since I didn't even know that they recycled glass downtown, did they give 
I'm asking James. Do they give special bins for the glass, like at your restaurant, like they did at our homes? Good answer. Uh, we use our own bins. Uh, I know some of the bars that are very conscientious about recycling, they have as many as 25 or 30 bins that, that they put them in. Okay. Uh, most restaurants, you know, on a busy weekend will generate three, maybe four bins. Uh, you know, you can get them for a couple bucks a piece. You might have to invest $10, 12 Well, then my question is, if either the recycle people or the city went to the various places, you know, they, we could easily drive downtown, past the restaurants and bars, see who's got what out, if anything, the night before pickup night, and maybe stop in and offer these if they would start recycling their glass. We will give you three bins, you know, whatever. Would, would this be? Because I don't know how else we could do something mandatory. I mean, yeah, I've had my cardboard that wasn't cardboard left. It's a pain. But they still aren't going to sit there and shake a, a black garbage bag. But maybe if we offered the bins, either us or the recycle people, offered the bins to these places for their glass, this would help promote recycling. So. Just a thought. Well, it <coughs> usually the inspiration for doing anything like this is if you don't do it, it's going to cost you money. So how do um, commercial establishments pay by the cubic yard? Um, how are you built by the cubic yard? <coughs> so if you had one one or two garbage bags for free, and then everything else you got billed for, uh, unless you recycled it, wouldn't that solve the problem? If it was in a recycled bin, you wouldn't have to pay for it. If it's in a plastic garbage bag, you're allowed to have two of those. Otherwise, you have to pay an extra 50 cents a bag. Is, could we work out something like that so that the, the, uh, the determination to recycle is to save yourself money? It's already that if you sure go over your charge. They, in yeah. essence, save themselves money if they recycle. And that's obvious from residential all the way through commercial. If I put out a lot of trash, they log in every time they pick up, whether I have the base amount of trash or more, they log that in and I'm charged accordingly. Okay. If you're up at 6.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and there's no sounds out there, and the garbage truck is out there, and he's picking up the dumpsters, and you hear that cascade of bottles going in to the garbage truck, it just breaks my heart because this is a future that we're leaving for our children. We have a responsibility as adults and property owners and business owners, particularly in a city like Eureka Springs that's known for its green and there is no excuse for people to just disregard the quality of the city and to throw things into the trash that should be recycled. The less they throw in the trash and the more they recycle, the cheaper it is for them. The unfortunate thing it will be down the road when we have to look for a new facility to put our garbage then you will see a price tag that will really catch everybody's attention. Do we have a motion and a second on the floor? We do. have the city attorney drop an ordinance for the mandatory recycling for commercial businesses. Restaurants, restaurants and bars. Restaurants and bars. And bars. That's what I was going to Yeah, restaurants and bars. So that will be the vote. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> no. No. Breathe, breathe. Get so like a three three. Get rid of the word mandatory. <laughs> Were you a no? No. Yes, he was a no. <laughs> three three. I say yes, go ahead and do the ordinance to bring to the table for a vote for discussion. Four three. That way you'll have a positive definitive answer. Hash it out later. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Moves us on to <coughs> we skip number six, postpone versus number seven, permitted uses in three three. 
Motion to discuss. Second. Second. Floor is open. Mr. Sabrina. Move to suspend the rules in place ordinance number 2185. Nope. No. no. That's number one. Number seven. Seven. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My apologies. I scratched it out early. Good Mr. try. Mr. Snyder, go ahead. Okay. No, he's got me all discombobulated. Wait a minute. Um, okay, this is in regards to the permitted uses in C3. We had been asked to simply put the whole little blurb of entertainment small into C3 for the Gavioli Chapel for their um, the Mystique Theater, whatever it's called, the, the magic show. And I, when this first came up, I said it then, and I'm going to go ahead and say it again. Um, considering this is being done for one place, we don't need that whole paragraph covering entertainment small, since the one place was given its C3 designation. There's no reason why we cannot state in there add strictly the live theater not that whole paragraph on entertainment so we don't want anybody doing bars arcades or anything else not in that neighborhood so all we have to do is add live theater which is what what they're asking what their problem is um, because it's not meeting the requirements small live theater now the other problem was uh, the C3, it's quiet entertainment, whatever. It's from 7 to 9, and my understanding is the theater is operating basically 8 to 10. Now, that means when they get out, they're getting in their cars in the parking lot and stuff. There's chitter, chatter, this, that, and the other. And I can understand, especially as close and tight as that neighborhood is in that area, I can understand that this is extremely disruptive. Um, so I would, I would suggest that we consider putting in for them only, since they've got their C3 only, live theater seven to nine. We're compromising, they could also compromise. Um, but I really do believe it, it's a good place for it. The auditorium's way too big. I've worked with magicians. You don't want a huge area. This is a great place, but you have to consider the neighborhood. Mr. Mitchell. I think we're a little premature in discussing this at City Council, considering the fact that planning discussed this at their last meeting. Planning held a vote in which they voted very clearly not to add small entertainment to C3. Likewise, Jack Moyer came to this meeting at some point in the past and asked Council to table this. It is, it, it's actively being, at, for, at Council, it's actively being discussed at planning. They're having a public hearing tomorrow night, tomorrow night mm -hmm. on this topic. And it, it, I think it behooves us in, in, at, at this point to allow that process to take place with, without. So I'm I would like to have a, an opinion from so us. I'd like so to they make a motion deal. to table this permitted uses in C3. And, until planning has finished with it. want to give an opinion? Is there a second? Okay. Motion made and second for discussion, Mr. McConnell. Go ahead. Oh, I can? Yes, yes. Oh, I yes. see. Okay. Yeah, I call <laughs> one. <clears throat> um, it just, you know, the, 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 the business that, that at the, at the Gavion and Chapel, Whenever, whenever they opened up to operate as they are now, I mean, I don't know. Did they get a condition? Try to get a condition use permit, or they just, they just did they it. Have a you know, I mean, they know what the laws are. Yeah, they, if they want to do something different than what C3 says, yeah, then let them go through the process. So if that's what if they're trying to do now, then that's what needs to be done. Um, I mean, it's that's the thing that really disappoints me is that uh, people try to circumvent the laws. And, there for a reason, so uh, you know they need to they need to follow the process just like anybody else. That's all I got to say. I, I wasn't wanting an action or anything. I just 
merely wanted a general opinion that planning can use at their meeting tomorrow night. Council basically feels this way or that way. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, we have a, a motion to table. Motion to table and a second until the next meeting or until after the planning meeting. So table it. Okay, does the motion table I mean it's until the next meeting or until it's brought back? Uh, it was my agenda? motion, I'll make it till the next meeting. Okay. Okay. I was going to find out one way or the other. <laughs> okay. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried 6 0. Moves us on to second reading of Motor Ordinance 2184. Motion to discuss. 2185. Dang it. 2185, I'm sorry. I looked the wrong way. Okay. Floor's up. This should be Move to suspend the rules and place ordinance number 2185 on its second reading by title only. Second? Second. second. Okay. It was, it was either. Yes, got it. Okay, you got it. Okay. Mr. Could I ask Beverly to come up? Hmm? We're taking a vote right oh. now. Oh, yeah, we're taking we're taking a vote. Oh, I thought we I thought you were drip saying go okay. for it. Go ahead. <laughs> Miss Elder? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Mr. Percupile? Yes. Ms. Snyder? Yes. Ms. McClung? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Six zero. Okay, ordinance number 2185, ordinance removing front corner setback requirements in certain zoning districts. Mr. DeVito. Move to approve ordinance number 2185 on its second reading. Second. What do we discuss? As soon as you say second. Okay. As soon as you say <laughs> second. <laughs> okay. Motion now, okay, seconded. I thought it was before now that. Floor's open. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Could I please ask Beverly to come up to the microphone? I have some questions. Beverly, come up to the microphone, please. <laughs> Jeez. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is on corner setbacks. In the area we're talking about, Wall and 62, because I don't know the zoning that well in that area, do we still have other front setbacks of a footage, and how far is that? Most you know? front setbacks are 35 feet. Most side setbacks are 15. But this one... This front corner made it from the front corner where the streets crossed parallel to the building, another 35. Oh. And so sometimes if the street was moved in, <laughs> even though the front was 35 foot back, they had to do a different kind of diagonal to sit on there. And not many people even understood what front corner setback meant. Okay, so at Wallen 62, we still have... 35 foot front setback and a 15 foot side setback. Is that what you're saying? At Wall Street? At Wall and 62. Wall Street and 62. No, that's C2 zoning? I don't know. That's and what C2 I'm saying. does not have front setback like that. So there's no front setback? I don't think. I don't know. I didn't bring that code book. Okay. Sorry. So if there is. Whatever it says in there. We're just asking, I mean, the fronts are still there. The sides are still there. We're just asking the front corner. I think C2 does have, still have this 35-foot yeah, setback. 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 Yeah, maybe it's just C1 that doesn't. It has a rear set of 30, side of 15, and front corner of 35. Thank you. That's C2, and that's what wall in 62 is? Yeah, C2. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. All in favor say aye. You have a motion to approve. Favor. Approve on the yeah. second reading, yes. 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 Aye. And this is the second. Aye. Oh, aye. <laughs> in favor of this, aye. This is the vote. We don't have to take a roll call vote on this. Oh. Okay. Yes. All together now. Aye. 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 Okay. Can you get post? Motion carried 6 0. Thank you. Move for a recess. Second. 
All in favor say aye. 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 Hey, we got it. Aye. aye. <laughs> Ten minute recess. Thank you. We'll be back in session, entering new business. Uh, number one is the downtown landscaping, weeding, and trash control <coughs> discussion. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Second. Floor is open. I wanted to bring this, this issue up because I got the opportunity to join the Preservation League board, and there was some discussion going on there about various things downtown and how they had originally, and I think it was four years ago, bought all the baskets and had people, flowers hanging and various other things. And then I have recently been receiving feedback, not only from my own guests, but from, from other people about the appearance of town in, in general, just the general appearance. The words are coming up are Weed, weed infested, cluttered, tired, and I, I'm, I'm thinking, I know we're obviously an old city, I mean there's no doubt about that, and obviously the buildings are old, but I, I think back on guest relations, and I, I'm probably going to get a, tr a tremendous amount of negativity about this, but if any of you have ever had the opportunity to have gone to a Disney park, from the moment you walk in, the concept of guest relations and how people are treated, not only from the way they are treated, but to the environment they walk into. They have studied that over the years for so long, they even know how long a person will carry a piece of trash before they drop it on, on the ground, and it's 25 feet. So when you take that concept and you realize, as we all do, that we rely on the tourist in this town. It started, it has been, and it always will be. That is our industry, it's tourists. Mm -hmm. So what does the town, what are we doing for our tourists when you go down Spring Street here as where Main crosses in and you can't get down the sidewalk on that stone wall that has little steps that goes up to the piece of plywood that's painted and you can barely get down the sidewalk because of the weeds or you happen to be going down the stairs down maybe by Henry's down there and the leaves and the weeds are coming out so far on the sidewalk it's almost an obstacle to walk or you're driving down North Main and you're looking up and except for the tremendous amount of energy time and money that Mr. DeVito put into the back of his business to make it look nice you look over and look at the other ones the weeds are taller than I am or you go down on North Main and you start at the New Delhi and you come up to the intersection of Main and Spring and the weeds walk down uh, Owen Street. It's the same thing. It, I, I don't think it, I, it maybe that we've been here so long and we just it kind of don't pay attention to it, but I, I really think we need to take a serious look at our city through the eyes of the guests and be sure that we are putting on the best show possible. If we're going to be talking about yards that need to be mowed on the historic loop, deteriorating buildings, buildings that should have been torn down, it behooves us to also take a look at the aesthetics of our city and how we're doing it. And I think it's a combination of the individual business owners, the residents, civic organizations and public works and I would like to challenge the civic organizations to consider a joint effort, Downtown Merchants Association, Preservation Society, in looking at what they can do to join together 
to assist in this process while challenging individual business owners and residents. <coughs> Public Works, I, I don't know what any of, any of this is actually under the direction of Public Works. Is the staircase is going down between the buildings Public Works? Is it not? Is it that stone wall that's over on uh, Spring Street with the staircase going up? It's pretty close to the intersection of Main and Spring. Is who owns that land up there? Uh, and that'll go into later into code enforcement. But we do have codes on the books about weeds and lawns and the way things look. And I watch that little tram go by all the time, uh, twice a day, one and three o'clock, with all these little sweet tourists on them and the ladies talking to them all the time. And they're up on the upper story loop. And, and they have to pass some pretty neglected property. I, I'm not trying to talk about people that do not have the finances or the resources, but it, it, come on. Let's clean up the lawns. Let's get the weeds down. And let's make the sidewalks where you can walk on them unless, you, you know, it's another problem. And, it, and I guess I, I'm just trying to say, basically, I, I really would like us to consider making a concerted effort towards our town and how it can be perceived by guests. Nobody likes to shop at a dirty grocery store or a dirty store. So why would you want to come to a town that is not attractive? Mr. Vito. Well, I agree with most of what Mr. Mitchell said. I, I, w I will like to point out that the city did come through last week and, and weeded down Main Street and took care of a lot of those weeds that were encroaching on the sidewalk and cleaned it, cleaned it up pretty nice. But yes, that, that's part of the problem, um, that there are still other things. Anybody else? Snack. When you've been here as long as I have, you've seen it in the condition it is now. I've seen it worse way back in the early 70s. And boy, have I ever seen it beautiful. I would really like to see some kind of a beautified Eureka Springs group at work again. I know we've had it before. I don't know the first thing about how to incite these people to want to get out there and clean and spruce and plant and, because I know what my timeline is like but I would really like to see I think it would be something that would be really nice if city council someone on city council or the mayor or whomever would talk with Jackie Wolven from downtown Eureka um, boy she's a go-getter and she has contacts with everyone I'd like to see her be the one maybe that would um get these various groups together because Eureka has had some really, really beautiful, gorgeous downtown views just in the last 20 years. And I, I understand exactly what he's saying. It's really looking forlorn, shall we say, which is a shame. Anybody else? Mr. Well, da downtown does organize a, a yearly cleanup that I know a lot of people participate in. Uh, we had rain this year. We didn't have rain <laughs> last year. Uh, you know, stuff keeps growing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mitchell. True. I, I just wanted to bring it to the forefront for, to let it mature with council for possibly the discussion here and those that are watching and the paper will hopefully write it that maybe council would be challenging our civic organizations and our individual business owners and residents to take step back and take a serious look through their through their possibly through guests eyes and to to attempt to do the very best that we can to make our city a, an attractive destination for our tourists who are our bread and butter now there might be a past resolution uh, you know that was put in place, you know, in, in, in reference to this, and but there's certainly no reason why we couldn't do another one as a, you know, uh, a reinforcement to the local population that, hey, you know, uh, you know, we want to always put our best foot forward and, and to, uh, you know, reemphasize that and, and uh, clean up or get out, you know, something like that. 
Yeah, Please don't get up. <laughs> Mr. Burke, well, uh, Mr. Mayor, is it the, on the public right of way, is it public works uh, that the thing public maintains is that? Maintains it typically, uh, some of the guys I see mowing and trimming and such. Mm -hmm. And then parks has Donnie that, uh, Donnie that does a lot of that work, and he does a magnificent job as far as I I'm I think concerned. he's actually got a helper now. And he does have a helper. Uh, he's assistant. from Texas. Sorry. Welcome. The system, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, I'd also like to tell you that I think that's a great idea about individuals participating or groups. <laughs> and I'd like to give, um, you know, kudos to Pat Lujan because he and, and other people have taken it upon themselves to actually maintain and improve the uh, garden sections uh, down there at the free parking area on North May. And they've done a real good job of that on their own, just on their own, just maintaining that. So, you know, I take a walk up hillside. Well, not so much now when it's hot, but, <laughs> you know, and I look off to the left as I'm going up, and it's just, it's so littered. It's just... Mm -hmm. It's sickening, you know. Yeah. And this time of year, you take your life in your hands, you'd be sucked dry by ticks. But uh, <laughs> but in, in the fall or in the winter, it'd be a good time for, for cleanups like that. And I think Mr. DeVito has already indicated that, you know, There's downtown one. has a, a cleanup day. And and I know uh, his, his wife has indicated that, to me, that there are other kind of cleanups of other areas of town, too. And it might be a good idea. I, I like that. I think we should go that route. Zeller? Well, does the fire department and their fire safe program ever get involved? I mean, when I go down Center Street, I really worry about the fire hazard because that bamboo is absolutely out of control on Center Street. And uh, that's a, a terrible fire hazard if it ever starts. Yes, they do. Hey, we actually just finished uh, this project up on by the uh, transit property. Mm -hmm. Where we took and cleaned all that out. Yeah, but uh, is that a matter of private property? Can we not go down there and just cut down that bamboo or get rid of it? It's especially bad at Mountain and Center. Yeah. In fact, at Mountain Center, it's it's reached the point now where you can't see yeah. anybody coming it up. Doesn't have to be anymore. a process through the property owner. We can't send public people onto private property for any reason. Well, but I know there are people that think bamboo is beautiful, but it's also a, an incredible fire hazard. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. I left out one potential here, and that's code enforcement. Because we have a <coughs> building inspector who's accountable for code enforcement, and we have some codes on the books uh, about the way lawns look, the height of grass and various other things. So I, besides just saying public works and civic organizations, hopefully would get a, a <coughs> joint, maybe some type of a joint meeting to discuss the concept of beautification or whatever you care to call it, cleanup, or something of, of the city in time for the, for the influx of tourists and the maintenance throughout that period of time, and then the individuals. But I, I, don't, I do want to be sure that we realize we do have somebody for code that can go by and, and tell individual people that their grass is exceedingly too high and the trash is too deep. Anybody else? All right, let me throw in one, one thing on this. Uh, we will be having a group of approximately 40 folks from Warren, Arkansas. It'll be a, a church group coming up here on a work mission and we will have 37 bodies to distribute amongst the city. Good. Most of which will work on this back part right here, uh, along the back wall and the north main up by the, where the the uh, park and the bathroom are going to go. They're going to do that that hillside in there too. Oh, and that's good. I believe that happening. <laughs> July twenty seventh. Are they taking pity on us? I'll take a case of tomatoes. <laughs> case of tomatoes. Okay. Yeah. Pink ones. That might can be a rain sound. Right, nothing else that moves us on to number two, discussion on Black Bass Dam. Move to discuss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the floor is open, Mr. Perky Pell. Uh, just, I'll be real brief here. Uh, Brian Hostick and I have, uh, uh, we went and applied to the, with the Community Development Partnership. And their committee, uh, which was, they had a meeting over at uh, Parks, 
and uh, we're now they agreed to have us us our group for the improvement of the Black Bass Lake Dam as a partner. Uh, however, <clears throat> any funds that are garnered as a part of that grants, funds, whatever, are limited, and I, I'm not real sure of the limit. I, I thought it was 20, but I, I, it may be as high as 50,000, which is still not enough to repair the dam, but it is. It would certainly be enough for us to to obtain enough money for the planning phase, and that planning would be planning as plans and specifications um, to actually improve the dam. Um, so that's what we're we're going to embark on with the community development partnership. Let's try to set that up and raise some funding to do to to develop plans and specs to look at a couple of options to repair the dam. And we'll also at that period of time we'll look at uh, decommissioning the dam as well. Um, after we but after we get past that point, then we'll probably wind up uh, getting a 501c3 which is uh, tax deductible organizational status and try to move this into uh, a realm where we can set up a, a website. We, we've already, I don't know if it's done as of today or not, but we're working towards obtaining the, the domain names. And um, so once we get that established, we're going to set up a website at this point in time, the website is going to be set up uh, pro bono, but I anticipate that uh, that there's going to be some ongoing changes and updates and things of that nature. So, any monies that are are put together, of course, being a bank, that's everything's taken into account. You have to have two people to sign it and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but we'd like to eventually move into the phase where we raise money to repair the agreed upon. Uh, solution or to embark on the agreed upon solution. So when I say agreed upon, uh, I suspect that at some point we will bring at least the concepts to here to the table, which you all have already been uh, apprised of by me, just the general concepts, but we will have them more fleshed out and, and see if we can come to a at least give some guidance for this group that's putting together, this organization that's going to be putting together this fundraising effort. Oh, well, that's where we're at. Thank you, Mr. McClellan. I have a question for Mr. Pergabile, and that, that is, uh, you know, with your expertise and all, in the, there, I would think that there would be some type of timeline that you would want to set that you know, and that in order to effectuate the repairs and effectively before the dam gets into such a state as it's as it's not really repairable or not worth it. I mean, is is there is that something like that you can put a timeline on, like one year, two year, three year? I mean, so so you know that that I mean that that it can be. Accomplished, or is it something that you may not want to? It, the, what's there is going to last for 20 years, or can I answer his question? Yeah, absolutely. No, uh, no, no. Okay. Hard <laughs> <Iron> rules. <laughs> um, you know that what you're talking about is is the dam imminently going to fail? It, you know, at any point in time, it could. It appears to be stable from the standpoint that we haven't seen any gross cracking or movement downstream or deflection. Uh, but that could all change with the, as we had Hurricane Ike, Tropical Storm Ike came up and over. Uh, it could change with a large rainfall event that overtops and washes out the face of the dam. So the timeline is we're doing everything we can as quickly as we can at this point because it has languished for, as far as I know, eight to nine years. And it's a little bit out of sight, out of mind. But nobody uses it much. But one of the things that, uh, Terry, that, that Brian has talked about is, is to really encourage use by local and visitors uh, with uh, sailing regattas out there uh, with miniature boats, little miniature boats. 
uh, uh, also there's uh, you know there's paddle boarding which on a real quiet waveless lake is just perfect um, of course fishing and uh, fishing improvement you know maybe uh, copying what was done at Lake Leatherwood with a, a pier or dock rather a floating dock of some sort so we're, we're real open to any kind of suggestion and anybody that would like to to get involved with this group is welcome to contact me via the city's email and uh, I'd be happy to go there. As far as raising funds to repair it, we have to step through the plans and specifications first. <clears throat> I have to investigate. I don't know whether the state has to approve those plans and specifications before anything is done. I think the state has kind of said, you guys are on your own because the, the dam may not be within their regulatory purview. So Some engineers would not. Corps of Engineers is not concerned. FEMA is not necessarily concerned. It would be the ANRC, uh, the, which regulate dams in, in the state of Arkansas. So once we get those plans and specifications set up, that's what we want to do as a partner with the Community Develop Development Partnership. Then we would go forward and say, okay, we've got a set of plans. Um, we'll, you know, we've got between myself and another engineer here locally, or the engineers that we hire uh, to, to look at this, we would have an order of magnitude cost for, for these different options. And then we'd say, okay, this is what we want to do, guys. Uh, let's go out and we're, we're going to start hitting the fun uh, development websites like Kickstarter and uh, what was it, GoGo, something, GoGo. Indiegogo. Uh, Indiegogo.com. So those are two that I know of. So we're going to be doing that, plus we're going to have a web presence and have everything come back to that whatever it is dot org or dot com maybe both I think it's great I, you know I think it's that's you know, some positive direction is being taken that's that's good I like it yeah okay. any further all right thank you sir all right, moves on to number three discussion of business license and categories for limo and taxi franchises Move to discuss second floor is open <coughs> Um, I, Terry and I are down for this. I don't know what to discuss. We, do we already have separate licenses for limousines and taxis? Go ahead. Yeah. Now, that, now that we are, no. And now that the ordinance passed to regulate limousines, this is the opportunity to create separate license categories. <coughs> it's not really essential that council's involved in assigning a number, that's kind of an in-house thing. Mm -hmm. And I have learned that what the number I suggested is actually already taken. I think the most important thing really is to settle on the $50 license fee. Mm -hmm. And I picked that number, that's the same rate for the step on tour franchise mm -hmm. where they pick the trams. Yeah. And so that's really the essential element. Okay, so what do we need a resolution to do that, or how do we go about doing that? If you're going to set a fee, you're going to need an ordinance. Oh. Well. And also, I would suggest that when you look at this, uh, removing the word franchise from what you're talking about. Uh, yes. We don't have I, a limo franchise, and we probably I don't, don't have a taxi sorry. franchise. I do not think, I know we don't have a taxi franchise, and I don't think we need one. I think it's overkill for a small town like this, and the way the business goes, we already have two companies going. We have one that could probably easily qualify, and the other one, it would be a hardship, but there's no point in subjecting them to that, as long as it's working. We have two taxi companies, and as long as they're getting along, I don't think that we need a franchise ordinance. But we do need separate licenses for limousines and taxi cabs, so yes. Uh, okay, I'm floundering here. I mean, no, no, I'm getting would, there. Would, uh, <laughs> and this is a, a address yeah. to the city clerk. Uh, uh, would changing that to limousine service because we have taxi? Well, it says taxi cab. Well, it's we, just, I think we let's just it have service. taxi cab and limousine service. Yeah. The current license that is that has them together is 115. So my recommendation is that 115 just become for limousines. Okay. And that 120 become a number 
this is this is not really necessary, but it's my suggestion for taxis. Okay. At a rate of fifty dollars specifically. And so if somebody would like to make an ordinance to that effect, that would be excellent. We can move on. Okay. So mm -hmm. Ms. Snyder. Okay. Now I'm I'm confused. Okay, if we have a taxi ordinance that at this point is allowing limousines and what are those big taxi things called? Jumbo, Jumbo cab. There you go. Okay, so what you're saying is a limo thing would be strictly someone who has a limo. It's not part of the taxi ordinance? Now that they are separated, they need separate business licenses. Okay, so if a taxi company has both taxi and limo, they need two licenses. They're, not, they're no longer combined in one? The way yeah. the ordinance is written, a taxi company can use their limos. Mm -hmm. What we need is an ordinance that sets a fee for a taxi license mm -hmm. and let the limo be a standalone so that the two different kinds of companies can get business licenses. Does that mean that the ordinance we just did that has taxis and limos and doesn't have to wait the two hours or whatever we had discussed, does that mean their limos would come out of there? I mean, would... No, they're jumbo cabs. Oh, okay. Thank you. See, that was the one meeting I missed was that discussion of jumbo. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Uh, uh, can I interject? Oh, somebody Please. else? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say... Uh, uh, didn't we do a limo ordinance? No. No, we didn't. We, we haven't? Limos. So. That's all we did. I mean, we, we can't have limos? <laughs> we can't have limos. Why we need one? <laughs> I Mr. thought we River? did a limo ordinance. We can't have limos. <laughs> yeah. We can? We can. Now, Great. We, we don't franchise them. We don't franchise our taxes. Well, I know. Or we, just, what we're going to do is just license them. Yes. The purpose of a business license, according to the state of Arkansas, is to raise tax for the city. So you're, at this point, discussing setting a tax on having XYZ business, taxi or limo. So if you think $50 is a fair tax, you can write an ordinance that says anyone operating limos has to pay a fifty dollar tax if you want to set it at five hundred you can set it at five hundred if you think but that's didn't you say you wanted a full ordinance which would be guidelines and insurance and all that Good. Not necessarily. now that we have the definition now that the ordinance has passed we have two creatures that have finally been separated therefore we need two license categories so that the taxi companies can get their license and that so that the people who just want to have limousines can get a license separate from the taxi. So, so this is the, taxis this is the next natural step. Okay, so compute. taxis and limos are totally regulated right now and except for the license? That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, that comes next. No? Now that you have accomplished getting that ordinance passed, defining what a limousine is and what a taxi is. And those two things have finally been separated. The next natural step in the process of doing the city's business is to let them have separate licenses. And so I'm just requesting that someone initiate an ordinance for a $50 business license for taxis. And leave leave limousines as one fifteen. Okay, the problem has been up until now is that the limousines and the taxis have been competing with each other, and now that we and according to Arkansas state law, a limousine is not a taxi. You cannot use a limousine to pick up people on call and deliver them. A limousine is a separate service where you hire them for weddings and all that sort of thing and. Uh, it's just a different kind of a service. And the way we are now, you get a taxi limousine license. 
And so if you have a limousine, you can go get yourself a taxi cab and you can compete with the taxis if you want to. Uh, this is not fair. If you're going to have a limousine business, then you need to have a limousine license and a taxi license is a separate thing. And if you want to have both, then you need to have two licenses. That's the only fair way to do it. And that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to clean this up so we don't go through this every two or three years. I would move to uh, have the city attorney draft an ordinance setting uh, licensing fees for both limousines and taxi cabs. I'd like to second that if that makes sense to the <laughs> lawyer. Okay. We still got a discussion here. Mr. Mitchell, go ahead. I, I think I agree with that motion, but I'm confused a little bit. Uh, and I need to ask a question of the city clerk. Why you want, so I'm really clear, you want to leave the limp leave the limo under the business license number now and move taxi to a new one. Did, 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 is that basically it? Right. 115 is taxi limo now. And you want to leave limo there and give, ta and give taxi a new one. Right. Technically, oh, the number that is given is an in-house decision. Okay. And I was just trying to explain the situation, and that's why I was talking about the numbers. But mostly it is establishing what's needed is establishing license rates for the two separate categories so, so you need a motion from us basically just specifically more for the taxi and just leave the limo alone or don't we actually have to pull taxi out of that business category by the council and no it's I'm confused. Not that complicated. We just need an ordinance saying <laughs> okay. that we need a $50 license fee for limos and we need a $50 license. We can leave that blank and fill and in the amount <laughs> later. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll Mr. Thank Perkins, you. Uh, I'll just address uh, 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 don't we already have in this taxi cab ordinance, uh, don't we already have a license tax of $50 in, in that? Is that what it lists? Yes. It's oh, perfect. Yeah. We, we already have that for taxes, so all we need to do is just have the same for limits, correct? Yeah. Or are we covered with limits? Because I, I can't find limos in here. There, no, it's there, it is it's not. It's it not. So, so we, need to do, we need to define a separate category for limousines. We have taxi service with, with taxis and jumbo cabs, which are the limos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Uh, so, if you just have a limousine service, then we just need to define it. Is that what you're saying? We don't need to define That's, it. We uh, need well, the I mean, license we, we need the ordinance. category. Okay. Well, you're in charge of the license category, correct? I can't set a license fee on my own. That's a that's okay. A, that's so a it's just really decision. the license book tax. <laughs> Bookkeeping, basically. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mr. Snyder. That seems simple. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not yeah. hard. <laughs> it really isn't. Okay, I have a question that may or may not relate to this, but if we get if limos have one number, taxis have the other. Taxis have been defined. The criteria has been set up. You know, the insurance, yada yada. Do we also have the same kind of criteria somewhere listed for limousines? No, ma'am. Okay. Then, I would like to say no new number until we give criteria for safety reasons to limousines. And once we've done that, it can have its own little number and the whole nine yards. Because otherwise, we're going to have people coming in here with beat up, rattled trap limos getting a license and having them fall apart and people die. It should have been. Okay. We don't have any qualifications <laughs> for tour companies uh, which presently operate in the city, so you know. We do for taxis, right? So, uh, you know, until there's a problem, you know, 
uh, let's keep it simple and, and we're getting way too complicated with this. Right now we're just trying to set up the criteria to establish a fee structure for limos because I've, the, the council, Councilman uh, Perky Pio pointed out we already have it for taxis. So uh, basically we're just trying to set an ordinance to allow a fee structure to be established for limousines. Is that a motion? Okay. I already made a motion. It's, it's already, already been already made and seconded. Second. We're still in discussion. It's already been seconded. Mr. Snyder. Until something happens can mean until someone is dead. That's a little too late. All I want to do is if we have already more or less set up guidelines for safety of the people on taxis, you do the same thing for limos, don't you? You don't have it for taxis. I thought we did. I thought that was one of our big things. No, I don't know right where mine is. There. No, it's, it's not in there. Oh. It's nowhere in The state regulates how a vehicle must be maintained. But that's what I mean. Okay, so that means it's we it. have it. It, it. No, you don't have it. The state of Arkansas has it. And isn't there something in there where it says where, and we are following the state decree or whatever, but didn't they, didn't they not have any limos? Point of order. What's your point of order, sir? Point of order is the ordinance that's on the table now. The conversation is not germane to that ordinance. It is. Okay. It moves us back to the original motion to have the city attorney write an ordinance setting fees for taxis and limousines, but we already have one for taxis. Okay, so it's just for limousines. Yes, sir. Right. Everybody understand, Mr. Clunk? I just have one just simple question. Uh, don't we have something on the books about regulating limousine fees? No. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that. Where they, got, you know, they have to rent for an hour, or okay. we, they so get a rent ahead, and we didn't do any of that. Okay. Uh, There's no limo ordinance, so. We didn't do anything like that. We talked about Set the call time at We're two hours between call and response. Is that, we did that, did we do that? Yes. That was it. And where did we where did we apply that? Was that applied limousines. in the Pardon me? To limousines. But I didn't think I thought we didn't have anything on limousines. I think we have a limo ordinance. So I don't know how we I just asked that a little bit ago and I was told no. Yeah, that's what we I'm don't saying. Have a limo we don't have ordinance. a limo ordinance. Yes, go ahead. You have an ordinance that yeah, defines the two separate creatures, which is what was needed. And that's been accomplished. That passed its third reading. So it's they're clearly defined, and the next natural step is to have a license fee set for the two separate creatures. So it's in there and says that they are allowed. We're are we allowed to have them. 2181? Yes, in that case, 2181. Okay. Question. Okay. Yeah, we got a vote on the uh, the <coughs> city attorney. Motion is to have the city attorney write an order set fees for limousines. And we have a second. For what, six years now we've been debating. This. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Present. What? I'm present. Because I'm still trying to read. Present? Okay. Yeah, present. And then, a, so? and then a question on it. We're done with it. <laughs> All right. So moves us on to number four. Purchasing 0 0.58 acres uh, that currently maintains, currently houses a sewer list station easement out behind the, uh, actually at the old side of the sewer treatment plant for the old Ramada Inn, which is now the defunct Victorian Inn. Move to discuss. Second. Okay. I know it was a mouthful, but I had to get it out, yeah, because it, it didn't say so. so. All right, let me, let me kind of hit this thing real, real quick here. Yes. Uh, we've lingered. A uh, gracious lady by the name of Katie Liberty owns the property that we have an easement on that can it currently houses our sewer lift station out behind the old uh, Sonic Drive-In, the Mama, Mother Yoder's, Mama Yoder's is currently a church, and now the uh, Victoria Inn. Uh, the parcel that you are looking at in your, in your handout uh, is 0 0.58 acres. She says that it listed for 
or appraised for five grand, she'll sell it to the city for 1500 That way we own the property and it's no longer easement because we'll have, we will possess the property. Wait, wait, so, do what again? What was that last part? It's it's appraised, appraised at? She said it was appraised at five grand. She'll oh. sell it to us for 1500 Okay. And what did you say after that? That way we won't have an easement anymore. Oh. We'll own the property that our lift station is on. Oh. Okay. Mr. McClellan. That, uh, that lift station, what is it? It just serves that rest home back there or that, that facility? Is I'm that not sure it? what it serves, sir. Uh, I, I just mean, know that, only, it's, that it's ours has been confirmed there's, by the There's only, courts. what that was, was that was the sewer plant for the, when it was constructed, was the Ramada. And that was the sewer plant. And then once, uh, City sewer was run out there. Then it was uh, it was connected. I believe it's on just a uh, gravity line. But the old Western Sizzlin is uh, is a pressure line. Then the uh, uh, they de they just decommissioned that sewage plant. And when that when the the I don't know what the word is for the retirement facility or assisted living facility mm -hmm. is. Yep. sits back in behind there. Uh, I just thought maybe they had their own sewer plant back there. I didn't know what they did, but apparently they must flow into there and then there's a lift pump. All I can confirm is there is a lift pump on that site of the old sewer treatment plant for the facility we just talked about. The but you Victoria don't know now. if it's functioning? It is functioning. Oh. It's currently maintained by the city. The lift station, not the sewer treatment plant. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. all we're that's, in. That's, that's yeah, all, that's, that's the sewer all treatment question. facility is it's defunct. defunct. It's yes. done. It's it is correct. Just okay. gravity flow to a tank. It's lifted up and pushed into the yes. city. That's okay. Correct. Well, then what's so, this $10 on the front page? That's standard verbiage on a deed. Yeah. Oh, I thought that's that exactly. was the yeah. offer. Yeah, don't worry about the $10. <laughs> no. Okay. No. So she is, she is offered to sell it to the city. Uh, at that price and go on. So that's why it's now before you, Mr. DeVito. Question for the city attorney? Yes, sir. Uh, what instrument do we need, to, uh, as opposed to give the authority to the mayor to execute this transaction? It would be typical to do an ordinance to uh, authorize them to purchase it um, after you're satisfied that the purchase price is correct. And you may also want to because of what has been said on there, uh, I would caution you may want to investigate whether there is also potential EPA problems yes. because of the old plant that sits there. This just that could cause a lot of grief to the city if they have to remove. This is to get it before you for consideration and all the finite details. Once I get your okay to follow through with it, then I'll follow through and bring it back to the council. <coughs> yes, sir. I'd move to grant the mayor authority to examine the potential EPA uh, issues with this property before we uh, enter, uh, entertain uh, purchasing the property. Second. 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 Ms. Snyder, you got some comments. Okay, considering where it's sitting at, now, do we pay them for an easement or are we just plain have an easement free We pay charge? them for the easement. Okay. Any idea what we pay them? I have no idea. Okay. Well, like I said, um, I haven't got that far into it yet. But okay. I, then the I second part of that question is, other than we wouldn't be paying for an easement anymore, is there anything we'd be doing with this property? I mean, is there, it's, it's yeah, half an acre, basically. Yeah. We'd have to access the property like. now through an easement. Huh? So that's how we access oh. the property now, to check the lift station or <coughs> repair it or service it. Okay, so where the lift station is, do we own that? No, not okay, yet. They own it. They own it. That's why they're trying to sell okay, it uh, so for a discounted price. Our stuff is sitting on their property on their and we're easy. paying rent, yes. so to speak. Yes. Okay, so aside from whatever the rent is for this piece of property, is there anything we can or would be doing with this, with it to make it feasible to buy it. Uh, I can answer that one yet because I don't okay, know. Okay, well, except we're talking yeah. approximately half an acre. Well, if you could find out what our rent is. Yes, I will. 
I would appreciate it and maybe have Dwayne come to the next meeting again. Yeah, Mr. McClellan. Now, the Director of Public Works, uh, apparently he has the, the specs and the information on this lift station. Apparently so. Okay. And then the second thing is uh, if the property is, is like that, uh, who owns around it? If she does. Who does? Miss Liberty. She does? Yes. I I actually, I have to go back and look, but I think it may be a joint owner. I think there's a property line. Kurt, Kurt yeah. Liberty is the original owner. She's his yes. wife. Yes. I That's didn't uh, see that. That property was all sold. That was all part of the motel property. Liberty's sold that off when they sold that to the motel. That's what I thought. That was all. Uh, apparently all not this section. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I'm being told. Like I said, I'll investigate it and come back with you with a full report with, with all the questions that I've been asked. Okay. Just, just need your authority to follow through with it. Okay. So. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I'll have you report by next meeting. Thank you. And that moves us out of new business into agenda setting. And Mr. DeVito, you're on top of the list. Okay, I would uh, like to put on the agenda the uh, issue of the 200-foot rule and all residential, uh, extending the 200-foot rule to all residential zones. Second that. Anything else? And uh, I, I know it's premature, but uh, we need to get budget review on our radar screen uh, for, I guess, sometime in July. Hopefully, we can. Uh, we normally do a mid year budget review, and we're about there. The July meeting? First meeting? Second? Uh, uh, probably the second meeting, because we probably will need that time to get as many facts and figures as we can assemble. Okay. Right. Anything else from you, Mr. Dubin? No, sir. Okay. Mr. McClung? Uh, nothing. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, uh, code enforcement. You want that on the agenda? If it gets a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Second. Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Perkspaw? I don't have anything. Thank you. Mr. Snyder? Mr. Taylor? No. Thank you. Council comments, Mr. DeVito? No, sir. Not tonight. Thank you. Mr. McClung? Uh, thank you, no. Mr. Mitchell? I think I'll pass. Mr. Perkitoff? None, thank you. Mr. Snyder? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Frankly, I've had it with what's going on lately here at Council and the newspapers. And everything else I know, most of the townspeople are sick of all this, everything that's going on in regards to the weeklies. But the thing that has me the most upset about this whole weekly rental situation are the personal attacks that are being done. Now, I realize that when we have public comment, unless we state a stipulation that they are restricted from personal attacks or something along those lines, that public comments is freedom of speech and you can say what you want. I take great umbrage at the personal attacks that have happened in the last several meetings in regards to the weeklies, even though it's public comment. I've been attacked in the hallway. Most of our officials have been attacked. And we have all just kind of quietly sat by. Well. The straw that broke the camel's back has happened. The last line has been crossed. You know, Google is such a fascinating research tool. I never really appreciated Google as much as I appreciate it now. So I'm going to quickly mm. read a short little spot. Miss Nutter. Uh before you continue, you might 
want to ask Mr. Weaver if this would be pertinent, and, and I'm not cutting in on your time, but I, I think I know what you're going to read. But uh, Personal this, information against someone who has attacked me and others? Oh, you don't want to read that. I would caution that if you read something that is incorrect or record. otherwise create uh, harm, you would open yourself to more liability than you would wish. And so they can come in and do a personal attack you, and cause harm. The difference is between an ordinary citizen and someone sitting at this table is every one of us at this table put our name on a ballot. And when we did, we gave up a lot of our freedom of what someone else can say about us. The average citizen did off? not do that. Can I take my mic off and go up there as a citizen? <laughs> at at your own jeopardy. Okay. That's... As any other person that takes that mic. Okay. And if they are making a personal attack on other individuals who have not placed themselves in the public eye, they're subject to the same types of actions that can be brought against them by those individuals. So if you are taking umbrage that they're attacking other people other than you, those people have their own remedies and their own rights. And you may feel like being the champion for someone else, but you put yourself in jeopardy. And what if we've done our own separate research on the issue and know that the gentleman in question is breaking the law, although he probably doesn't figure <coughs> we know that, which we do, would it still be improper to say something publicly as a councilman? Go to the police with it. Don't do it I'm here. I'm asking him. If, if you truly believe someone is committing a crime, I would take the advice of your fellow councilman, uh, report it to the proper authorities if you believe there's a crime being committed, and what about rather than airing it in a public forum. And what about putting it in the newspaper as a letter to the editor? <laughs> that would be a public forum on. also. Oh, so that wouldn't be allowed either? I mean, technically. Mickey, we're trying to save you some Oh, uh, well, that went past a long time ago. Okay, then I will just make a totally unrelated comment in regards to how thoroughly disgusted I am with using our public forum as your own soapbox to attack our citizenry. And I will merely make a comment that when a tenant and a landowner sign a contract to rent a place, that contract constitutes the person as a resident. Keep that in mind in regards to weeklies. Okay. Anything else? Ms. Ellen. Oh, so, only for now, because um, if that happens again, all bets are off. Okay, well, <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I have something very nice to say about somebody, so relax, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> My you girlfriend is here. I can say something but nice too. <laughs> before I say that, let me say that I have never personally been attacked by anybody. <laughs> I don't think they dare, but if you want, go for it. Um, Later, Joyce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now then, I'll share. <laughs> now then, no, something really nice happened. I, I have to give kudos to Lonnie Clark, our finance director. He sends us a, a report every month on the city's finances on that software that we all like to pretend that we understand <laughs> perfectly, which we don't. But this month he went way beyond. He did an analysis of the city's finances, who was up, who was down, what his prognostications are for the future, where we should be. It was very complete, and he didn't have to do this. The law didn't say he had to do it. He just went above and beyond because he's just a good finance director. And I want to say thank you, and I want him to get recognition for that. Here, so here, thank here. you, Lonnie. Yes. It was incredible. OK. Uh, Mayor's Commerce next. Just really quick, let you know that uh, our Safe Routes to School grant was turned down. No, our what? Again. Safe Routes to School grant oh. been turned down again for the second year in a row. Uh, the town hall form is on the website, up and running right now. Ah. Brand new, so 
Also, we had the Arkansas Department of Heritage uh, award us a green old house day grant for thirty-four. Let's see, three thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. It's small, but we we'll make use of that. Also, uh, a short list of events: June the thirtieth is Grand Illumination Decorating Contest and Kickoff, eight p.m. at Crescent Hotel. July the fourth, from two to five, is the Parade Fourth of July activities at Basin Park. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We're out of here. Thank you, Council.